years ago when I really just started to teach, I quoted Paul in the book of Hebrews saying, we need to distinguish between uh, light and darkness. And someone who's not in this ministry anymore said to me, well, what's so hard about that? I can tell whether it's nighttime or daytime, see? But Paul was speaking about spiritual darkness and spiritual light. So the scripture sounds so simple, the end of the Lord's righteousness. Oh, wow, well, I'm, I'm righteous. My sins are forgiven. I'm going up in the rapture, and I'm going to live in heaven, and I'm going to see my dead relatives and my pets, my dead pets, uh, and I'm going to be happy for eternity. That's what many, many people in the church will tell you, see. But they don't even know what it means. Their carnal mind has understood what Paul said. I believe Paul knew what it meant. Paul knew what he was saying. He was saying, the law ends for you, okay, when, when the, the, the underlying morality of the law is so much a part of you that every response that you have justifies the law rather than, than violates the law. I'm going to say that again. The end of the law stops for you. You stop being under, and this is for me too, we stop being subject to Jehovah's righteous sowing and reaping judgment, which is the law. Okay. That law has no power over us when such a degree of morality, morality, okay, arises in our consciousness that it is impossible for us to have a response. Now, I'm not talking about words, okay, a spiritual emotional, spiritual, mental response that does anything other than completely justifies, lines up with, agrees with the spiritual reality of the law. That's when you stop dying. See? When our soul arises to a level of morality that every response that we have agrees with the law. The way it is now, we, we sin all the time. And then Jesus comes and forgives us, and we recover. We get sick, but then we recover. We fall down, but then we stand up. So when are we going to stop getting sick? When are we going to stop falling down? When our moral consciousness lines up with the law. And now we have everything that it takes for our moral consciousness to line up with the law, but we don't know what the law is. Or if we think we know what the law is, every jot, you know, every jot and tittle of the law. I don't, but I'll tell you, there are many rabbis that do. I will tell you that. But do, do they know the spiritual application of it? No. <laughs> so we have a lot of work to do. And as we serve God and study and learn, our lives should get better and better. If the door does not open to longevity or immortality in this, in this lifetime, then I believe that our, I believe that our, our family inherit not, they don't inherit everything that we've attained to, but they, um, how can I say this, Lord? It, our victory will definitely work on, for the benefit of our relatives and our descendants. And then when the, when the day comes, when the day comes in this realm of time, that it becomes possible to enter into longevity, our descendants will be amongst the first to enter in. Because it basically is the same soul. And that's the way it works. Well, you say, but, I'll, but you'll be gone. It'll be your descendant. That's the way it works. So we seek to serve God and be blessed every day in every possible way so long as we're alive, see. Just for the privilege of serving him. Brethren, we cannot even serve him if he didn't let us serve him. So we have to get our conscience straight. We have to get our priorities straight. We have to understand what's important for us and for everyone that's attached to us.